This tutorial was brought to you thanks to the supporters on the screen. Check out tapjiles.com to find more Dreams resources, donate to support my work, or engage my services to get private instruction or help on a project one on one. Emma released a launch trailer in which a camera flew around through different games by the community and had text like that kind of 3D locked relative to the animation of the camera, but obviously it was in different scenes and stuff. Let's add a new camera. Group it up with this chip and that lets us move the camera within the group but the group doesn't move so now I'm going to do that and then L L1 oh, let's move it there right so now let's see what we have cool so that actually moves within that group as you can see now so this timeline animates the camera around like that so let's uh, in this group uh, add some text let's play there. so I want to be able to rotate this text round like that so I'm going to turn on allow rotation and now I can rotate it like that so let's try just putting it like that and see how it looks Okay, so that's, that'll do. I'm going to have another timeline. That's going to move that group. So I'm going to move it so it's maybe it's like down here. Boop. So now when it gets to that point, the whole thing moves over there. So let's see how that looks. So the text maintains its position. So it's like the text isn't moving at all within, like the text stays there and still perfectly tracks even though we move the location. So you can use this for kind of cool trailers looking at different parts of your scene. So if we put, let's put a tree over there. So now let's move that so that the whole thing is over by the tree. So it's like looking up through the tree or something like that. And the text is peeking out from behind the tree. Let's see how that looks. Got a cool looking rock. And now we're in the tree. So you can have um, like your different areas of the scene or completely different different gameplay being showed off, shown off with animation and stuff in different play parts of the scene. And you can use exactly the same camera movements and the same text box so that it, it kind of matches up. And then you can go in here and I'll put that in the chip. So that now that's that's kind of wonkified it probably. So then in, with this same timing, we can change other stuff. So we can change this. change this text to something else and leave that off so then that keyframe which moves the whole thing over there we can turn this one on and turn the old one off at the same time so now you say tap Giles and that says tutorials in the same spot which is kind of neat now uh, something you may notice is the text as we move around it kind of blurs a bit but what we can try is to put a grade gadget in there and just make sure that um, motion blur is off. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so now you don't get that fuzziness on the sides of the text. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so that one worked. So that one had a glitch, probably because there's lots of flex and it's like messing with the performance, something like that. Uh, if you get one of those glitches, then you can do this a slightly different way, which isn't as easy as this, but will get you the same effect. So we're going to make a copy 
of this and the same timeline affects all the stuff in the new copy as well so then get to that swoopy point again and adjust where this copy is and now um, because these are separate cameras you're not trying to move the view on the same camera you're just cutting completely to a new camera so if we just uh, make sure these are all set to cut now we need to power the, one, the right ones at the right time so let's go back to our sushi bit and put a switch on I need another switch for the first one if a group only contains gadgets then you can see all the gadgets but if it has a sculpt or something then you only see the sculpt that's why you can see the ga gadgets but you can also wire things straight into those gadgets like that which makes it nice and easy but them up against each other so actually we probably want to wire into the group because we have text as well if you don't have text as well then that's fine so tweak the group first and then move that wire to the group so now the text doesn't show unless that camera version is kind of active so now that one has a glitch um, and that one has a glitch as well this is because keyframes aren't constantly applied to objects that are powered off which means when you get to this point now that ca that camera is on so it has to scramble to kind of figure out what this keyframe position is for that camera and put it put you in that view so you actually want to have all of these going all the way back and they just end when you don't want to have that view anymore and you want this one to take precedence um and then that one and then that one but let's see if that so we've actually got i think the last one maybe if all of them become powered at the same time it uses what order the cameras were created in to figure out which one to actually use so if you turn on the grid and then just copy the group and then delete the old one and then move the new one back into the same spot then it's it's like copied in place but now this one is uh, newer but then you have to remember to wire that back into the new copy so let's do that and that one and that one so we'll start with the first one snap to the second one and then snap to the third one cool then what you might need to do if you have these extra bits inside then instead you might want to have this wired straight into the camera instead of the group and have another thing for the group the text and stuff should only show at that point see how that looks rewind and then second one cool and third one cool so the annoying thing about that fix is that if you want to tweak the animation of the camera now you have to do it in all the cameras somehow or redo the copies every time so it's um a bit of a nightmare or you can make the camera animation itself in a separate element and then import uh, change it in the element and then update it in the scene something like that that could work as well hey it's tap giles here I've been working hard with the community, helping on forums and answering questions across the internet, and more tutorials are being added to my Patreon all the time for my early access supporters to enjoy and learn from. Most recently I've added videos on many aspects of animating paint and creating precision line work. A simple method of giving the player in-game directions to their next destination, a quick golf putting mechanic that's easy to get started with, and a new way of using a puppet to make a camera rig. 
with an optional GoPro shaky cam feel to it. More advanced topics are being covered as well, such as an implementation of Conway's Game of Life that makes beautiful patterns spider across the screen, an in-world number display in the style of a cash register, word lock puzzle logic inspired by the amazing game Lock, and transform recording, a new method letting you record the position and rotation of any object as it moves in the scene along with instructions on how to use a new cinematic camera rig built on this technique. These tutorials and much much more are available now at patreon.com slash tapdials, totaling 9 hours of video to learn from. And if you appreciate my help online, this is the perfect way to support me and keep my help coming. Sign up at patreon.com slash tapdials for just $3 to get 9 hours of video tutorials today. Thanks for your support.